Happy New Year, everybody. It is officially the year 2023, Sunday, January the 1st. I'm recording this actually a little earlier, Sunday, January 1st, uh, because I wanted to um, show off a couple of things, <clears throat> excuse me, that I was able to, uh, or that I was lucky enough to receive um, for Christmas and a few things I picked up when I was actually able to get back into Pittsburgh. The box of jank is here for a reason. The first thing I got, I'm not going to show you everything, but I will simply say this, in this bag, oh, here, I'll give you a little, a little sneak peek. Can't see it all. A refill, ooh, there you go, on the box of jank. 14, I think it was, different packs. Now the box has even more stuff. Feel free to pause and catch something if you want. Um, on the way to the hockey game I went to with my dad, we stopped at um, a collectible shop in uh, a town not far from where my mom lives and where my dad lives, just outside of uh, Pittsburgh. And really cool little shop. I'm going to throw them a little plug. They're not paying me, but it was a cool shop. If you're ever in the Pittsburgh area, definitely recommend it. D&E Collectibles. Um, and they have a website, according to their receipt, which is good, so I'm going to be checking out their website. I'll throw it, uh, I'll throw it down there if anybody's curious, because if you're ever in the Pittsburgh area, uh, definitely say that it's, uh, it, I would definitely say it's worth uh, a look. A lot, a lot of cool stuff. But now the box of jank has been re-upped for a little bit, and we're going to move on slightly, hopefully, uh, in some sort of cohesive, uh, Manner, a gift I got from a very lovely friend of mine, the same person who has also sent many packs for Jank Pack Thursday. She sent the first present, and I could not believe it. I got my Krang Funko Pop. Didn't even know this one was out, and all of a sudden it appeared in a box on my doorstep. And he, I don't have many Funkos. But I like the I like specific ones, and this one uh, from the same person who also, uh, for my birthday a year or so ago, got me the Skeletor and Panthor from He-Man. But I think Krang looks amazing. <clears throat> and also, this same person, you will see tomorrow, got me something that is perfect for Magic Monday that I have, and I'm not even... Um, uh, exaggerating for effect. I have literally never seen nor knew existed. So you're going to want to stay tuned for Magic Monday because this one is, uh, th this one's going to be something. I cannot wait to get into it. Uh, so we're going to move Krang off to the side and all I'm doing is hearing the voice and the Technodrome theme. <coughs> Pardon me. And we are going to move on to something that my sister gave me. Uh, she told me about it a while ago, and then I forgot about it, but it is, and I haven't seen it, the whole 1987 Tops Traded. Now, I know there's some pretty big cards in here. I've seen parts of this, and I'm curious if, and this is, I think, still the original seal. I'm going to go very gently with it, and I just want to go in and take a look at it. Oh, see, all my gently is no match for my fat sausage fingers. Um, and I don't want to rip this. There we go. There we go. The box is intact. 87 tops traded. Like I say, I've seen a couple, but... Oop, and I, I can't remember who the big ones are. So if anybody would like to uh, remind me, I think... I don't know. We'll see. We'll just go through them real quick because... And these are in... Basically brand new shape, and this should be the whole set. Greg Minton, there you go. Fred McGriff, Larkin, Spanky Lavalier. That's right, Reggie Jackson, I think, was one of the sought-after ones. Luis Salazar, Newman, Umberdazzi, Sunberg, Shields, Hudson Heyman. Tony Pena, I think this was the year after he left, uh, would have been the year after he left the Pirates. Yeah, and she, she found these, and said, you know, do you have any interest? I said, yes, because I've never actually seen the whole set. So let's just go through real quick. Here's good old Danny, 
you know, Danny Gladden, Lance Parrish, great player. And I just, I love the design, I love the back, and I'm going to go through and put these in a binder, because these are just Eckersley, Seitzer, the Hawk, these are just amazing. The fact is that they're 35 years old and in much better shape than I would have hoped to be at the age of 35, which was several years ago. And this is, see this, I think Steve Carlton, I think was a big one too. And this is the kind of stuff that when people get you, you know, all of us, all of the collectors out there, you know, when people get you, they get you. And my sister gets me. And this is, this is, this is cool. I cannot wait to, ooh, David Cohn. Remember, I, I I found a list of like you know the top ten hunt cards from this series, and uh, I bookmarked it. I read it. Ooh, slick. Love me some slick. Uh, I bookmarked it. I read it, and have instantly forgotten it. Tigers, shout out Lisa Z, Sticks G, and Cole. But oh man, like I said, I've only seen I think the Reggie Jackson in the Oakland A's is one of the only ones I've ever seen before in person. For again, for tops traded, you know, this was a, a different one. Juan Berenguer, and then we got one more thing. Oh yeah, I'm gonna put these in a binder, and then I'll maybe do like a little short of the, uh, of the collection, just to uh, show it off because it would actually be one of the first complete sets that I've ever had. I used to get those box sets back in the. Uh, Ooh, Doug Drabeck, Cy Young winner, one of the one of the great pitchers, and actually a very good autograph signer. If you can track him down, I know he was doing some coaching. Um, I don't know if he still is, but he is a good autograph signer. Yvonne Calderon, I think, is passed because I've always I always run across his cards and I can't remember. I think he has passed, unfortunately. Storm Davis, I remember him? Brock, Danny Jackson. There you go, Cal Ripken Sr. That's a good one. I haven't seen that one, that card in general, not just traded, but in a while. Expos, love me the Expos. Bill Madlock, Eddie Milner. Another manager, Larry Boa. Nice. So there you go. If you haven't seen it or haven't seen it in a while, just a quick look through. Thank you to my sister, because that is a very, very cool gift, and this will be bindered up very soon and like I say maybe I'll do a short of that uh, pause one second I need to reset and we're going to do um, one more thing to kind of wrap up this uh, end of year review slash uh, move into the new year tease for the magic Monday etc so hang on one second and now ironically considering what I'm about to open we're going back in time that's right, History by Mail, and this was December's. Uh, uh, it came, obviously, in December, unfortunately, with the holidays and everything going on. I didn't have a chance to open it, so I wanted to open it now, get it out of the way before January's comes. And I love me my History by Mail, so what do we have here? Oh, Appomattox Courthouse, Virginia, and that's another thing. Uh, when they say, well, this is obviously the sur where um, Lee surrendered to Grant to end the Civil War, um... The t it wasn't in a courthouse. Appomattox Courthouse was the name of the town, not an actual play, not in the actual courthouse. They may have had it in the courthouse, but that was the name of the uh, the town. And this is, I mean, fantastic writing. But you know, whoever's handwriting this is is quite quite good. Uh, let's see if I can read it. No, I can't read it, unfortunately. But we do have the transcript. In five, you see the surrender of the Army of Northern Virginia, which was Robert E. Lee's. But either way, we're going to set this up here. And yes, I, I'm, I'm going to get a better setup going here. I have a... Ugh, man, I really need to get my act together. 2023 needs to start off a little, uh, a little better. Okay, so now we have the transcript of the Articles of Surrender of Robert E. Lee's Confederate Army, April the 10th, 1865, Appomattox Courthouse, Virginia. Agreement entered into this day in regard to the surrender of the Army of Northern Virginia to the United States authorities. First, the troops shall march by, by brigades and detachments to a designated point, stack their arms, and deposit their flags. 
Oh, yeah, I mean, I've never actually read the Articles of Surrender. It's amazing how, you know, detailed it obviously would have to be. All public horses and public property to be turned over to staff officers designated by the U.S. authorities. Transportation may be agreed upon as necessary. For the transportation of private baggage of officers will be allowed to accompany the officers to be turned over at the end of the trip to the nearest U.S. quartermasters, receipts being taken for the same. Uh, couriers and wounded men. I wonder why they capitalized wounded. I don't know. Couriers and wounded men of the artillery and cavalry whose horses are their own private property will be allowed to retain them. The surrender of the Army of Northern Virginia shall be construed to include all forces operating with that army on the 8th inst... 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 inst uh, I'm not sure what INST would be an abbreviation for. I'm thinking maybe institution, the date of commencement of negotiation. Is it spelled properly or is that an old spelling? Uh, for surrender, except the bodies of cavalry are actually made actually made their escape previous to the surrender. 20 miles. Huh. I'm going to have to reread that one. Signatures. John Gibbon, Major General. Volunteers. BVT. I'm not sure. BVT. Again, this is... See, this is what I love, and this is what I'm going to be doing the rest of today while I'm catching up on videos and editing this one so you can see it later tonight. Stamp the National Archives of the United States. And that would be that one. National Archives of the United States. How cool is that? So there's the transcript, and then... Pardon me. Terms of Confederate Surrender, blah, 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 blah. General Robert E. Lee and Ulysses S. Grant. Um... Which actually wasn't his real name. I believe his name was Hiram, actually. The enclosed document written the subsequent day by commissioners appointed by each general details how the surrender was to take place. You had the Battle of Appomattox Courthouse, the last battle of Robert E. Lee, the Army General in Chief of the Confederacy after losing the Army, but surrendered to the Union Army of the Potomac. Yes, so that's where um, Grant was leading uh, the Eastern Theater. So, uh, Army of the Potomac created shortly after the first Battle of Bull Run, disbanded in May of 1865, so the following month, following Lee's surrender at Appomattox. The Battle of Appomattox Courthouse, which lasted only a few hours, that's right, effectively ended the four-year-long Civil War. Well, this is true, because by that point, the, uh, the Confederacy, excuse me, the Confederacy was um, already completely almost broken at that point the supply lines were shattered because of uh sherman taking uh taking down atlanta and just basically the the march to the sea cutting off the uh the supply line so i'll just keep this up and if you would like to pause and read this it's always fascinating i'm glad people still like me doing history by mail because i love it i'm going to continue to do it surrender and this is um I've been a what, the past couple of months, has been a lot of Civil War stuff. At the end of the celebration, I quietly told the band of officers, the war is over, the, rebel, the rebels are our countrymen again. Lee only surrendered his army of Northern Virginia. Well, true, but that was the, um, um, the, beginning, of, the beginning of the official surrenders for uh, everybody, because history will say, you know, you know uh, Robert E. Lee was one of the best... Uh, Confederate generals there were, I believe. The other one that, historically reading from my vote, uh, would be Nathan Bedford Forrest. Uh, General Lee's pardon yet. President Andrew Johnson issued a proclamation of amnesty and pardon on May 29, 1865 to those who had participated in the rebellion against the United States. However, 14 classes were excluded from the proclamation and members of those classes had to send a special application to the President for amnesty and pardon. And unfortunately, Given the time of the world that we were in, I think we can guess what some of those um, uh, classes, unfortunately, were. Application to General Grant. So, yeah, probably military. Or probably generals. General Lee sent an application to Grant, wrote to President Johnson, and submitted an amnesty oath as per jo President Johnson's proclamation. Secretary of State William Seward, he of the folly, then gave Lee's application to a friend as a souvenir rather than have it processed, and it took over 100 years for Lee to be granted an official pardon. I did remember hearing about that, that, you know, he didn't process it. After Lee's oath of allegiance was discovered in the National Archives, 
Generally, his full rights of citizenship were posthumously restored by a joint congressional resolution and signed by President Ford in 1975. Uh, well, that's what it is. History is, uh, history is an intriguing thing. And like I say, I'm glad you like it. Glad I keep doing it. Glad I got to uh, go through and uh, do December's finally. It's been sitting on my table for a while, almost mockingly. But there you go. That's going to end this little wrap-up slash move-in to 2023 and a send-off to 2022. Take a hike. You were, you know, kind of a lousy year. And we're going to part with Krang. Hopefully you guys like it. And again, don't forget to tune in tomorrow, Magic Monday. This is going to be something interesting, and I cannot wait to see it. Take care, everybody. Hope you all had a happy new year. Safe. Enjoyed it. And let's get that forward start into 2023.